What's up everyone? Welcome back to my week six of BB Can Six recaps. And what a week it was. You know, uh, a lot of things went on this week. Um, you know, especially the way it ended, it was kind of a little crazy. I can relate a lot to this week. Just everything that happened from the beginning all the way through to the end, I can relate to a lot of things. So I'm really looking forward to talking about this week. So that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so the week starts with the HOH competition. It's called Buttoned Up, and all the house guests have to hold their uh, hold a button up. They have their hand up in the air. They got to hold a button. If their finger falls off or slips off, whatever, they're out of the game. Very simple game. Uh, I liked how they put it on the live feeds. I didn't watch it at all, but it was a live competition. They did one like that in season five with us called Buzz Killed. It was the same thing. They threw Temptations, uh, and it's up to the house guests. Do they want the Temptation or do they want HOH? And it's it's, it's a simple uh, simple competition. Nothing too crazy. Um, there's a few things that happen. Uh, Paris, uh, you know, was the first to go. They offered a few a few prizes or temptations along the way, and the first one was a thousand bucks. Now here's the thing: Paris takes a thousand bucks. It's good. I mean, it's not that bad, but it just goes to show you how safe she feels. If she feels that she can just take a thousand bucks and risk a hundred thousand, she feels safe. It should let the other people in the house know that hey, this girl is really safe. There's a few of us. Fighting for our lives every week, and look at Paris sitting there pretty. So she takes a thousand bucks, no big deal. I believe Ryan falls off second. He says his hand just slips off. Uh, Maddie goes out as well. Um, and now here's the thing, okay? They threw in the biggest prize you can have in the game other than winning, and that's immunity, okay? So they throw in a temptation that you're safe for the week if you take this temptation. Now, Derek goes and takes it, and it's. I'm surprised it wasn't a mad dash to it. Uh, you know, on, on any season I was on, if I see that I'm running for it, that's all you want. You want immunity for the week. That's something that's, that's the most important thing other than winning the HOH or controlling the week is your safety. So here's the thing. Um, I'm surprised that a lot of people didn't dash for it, and he kind of just walks over and takes it. No big deal. Now, I know people were complaining like, oh, what a waste, because Kayla was HOH, so getting the, the immunity was, was useless. In fact, no, it's not useless. It's the complete opposite. The fact that Kayla won HOH and Derek had the immunity, they controlled the week completely. What if Erica would have taken that immunity and Johnny, you know, wins the veto or whatever, they can't take a shot that they want to take. So the fact that Derek did take the immunity is big. Uh, not saying that he was in danger, not that way, but the fact that he blocks somebody from saving themselves that was in danger. So the fact that he took the immunity was big. Uh, good on him, good on them, good move. Um, so that's that. Uh, Johnny, uh, I don't know what the order is after, but Johnny does get eliminated because they, they were at a point in the competition where they had they couldn't switch hands anymore, and he accidentally switches hands. He gets disqualified. Now here's the thing, okay? So they're down to a few people, and Kayla offers everyone immunity. They offer, the temptation was a phone call from home, um, which is big. I'll tell you firsthand, okay? Uh, as someone with kids, young kids in the house, it's big. You get that phone call from your kids, it's big. Uh, if you have young kids and you play the game, you understand. If you don't, you simply don't understand. That's just the way it is. It's just simple facts. If, you, if you've if you been in that situation, you understand. If you haven't, you don't. And it's big. To hear from his son, that was great. I loved it. Uh, one of the best parts for me. And that's the thing is, you know, people watch Big Brother for different things. Now, I don't watch it for that that kind of stuff. I do watch it for the strategy and all that stuff. But there's certain moments that, that hit me harder than it'll hit someone else. And there's moments in the game that'll hit other people harder that I really don't care about. It's just that's the beauty of the game is people watch it for different reasons. And that's just the beauty of it. So anyway, the fact that he got to talk to his son was amazing. Uh, I love that. It was great. But here's the thing, okay? Kayla did mention that whoever drops... The way I saw it was if you drop and take the phone call, you're safe for the week. That's the way I saw it. You won't get nominated, blah, blah, blah. So I was really surprised uh, how the week played out in the end because, uh, you know, in reality, the way I saw it was that Will should not have seen the block at all. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but anyway. So Kayla goes and wins HOH. Um, kind of, you know, not a big deal. It's kind of... Uh, it's kind of a good thing in a way for the show because it's another side winning HOH. It's not just the same boring weeks, you know, just, you know, boring stuff going on, predictable, predictable. Um, so I was kind of happy in a way uh, that Kayla won and could kind of take a shot at another side of the house for sure. Uh, so Kayla wins HOH. She decides to nominate Ryan and uh, Will for nomination. Now, as I was talking before, uh, Will was supposed to be safe for the week, so the fact that Kayla put him on the block, she kind of went back on his word, on her word, and Will was like, "Well, you told me I was safe." And she's saying, "No, you know, if you drop, if everyone dropped, then you would have been safe." 
listen, uh, she kind of screwed him a bit. And, you know, but that's Big Brother. That's the way it goes. If you're trusting, you take someone's word, they can go back on it. That's just the nature of the game. It sucks, but that's the nature of the game. So, your nominees this week are Ryan and Will. Okay, now I want to get into Kayla's HOH a little bit, okay? So, there's a lot that's going on this week, so I'm not going to really go through everything in detail. I'm just going to kind of jump into to the points that are, I find are kind of important. But I want to talk about Kayla's HOH a little bit. So, when she's talking to everybody, I like what she's doing. Now, here's the thing, okay? I don't think she executed it properly, but she had the right idea. She was putting in cracks in everyone's alliances and everyone's friendships and everyone's trust. She's telling whoever that hey these people are telling me to put you up or these people are telling me to put you up to everybody else so it's kind of putting doubt in other people's mind i like where her mind was at i just don't think she executed it properly she could have got a little bit more friends she could have made a little bit more friends out of this week uh she could have got a little bit more information again i am only watching the edited show i am not watching feeds at all so there could be a lot more going on behind the scenes and that the viewers or the people that watch the feeds know that I don't know. I have no contact with the feeds at all. I, I just want to stay away from it. Anyway, uh, from what she was doing, I, I felt it was the right idea. Um, but again, just did not execute it properly. But, you know, putting the cracks in people's uh, friendships and down in people's minds and kind of starting to pit people against each other. That's the way you play the game. And I kind of like that and I respect that uh, move from her part. Now I want to get into the noms a little bit, okay? So... Uh, Kayla had her mind made up. She, I think she was going to put Maddie and um, Will up, I believe, or whoever it was. I don't remember. Anyway, Paris goes in a few minutes before the noms and convinces her that, you know what, Ryan is the one that's been manipulating everybody and doing all this stuff and really changes Kayla's mind last minute and she ends up putting Ryan on the block. Now, here's the thing. Ryan's telling her, kid, you know, that was a mistake. Uh, it's not me, it's them. But here's the thing. In that game, your perception is everything. We have it easy sitting at home. I'll tell you firsthand. Sitting on this couch, you know, we see everyone's diary rooms. We see everyone's true intentions. In the house, you see what you see, you hear what you hear, and you have to filter it out to what's true and what's not. There's no narrator. Uh, there's no narration. There's no big brother telling you the answer. It's you have to figure out the answer. So basically, Kayla is just believing the wrong people and that's what she's going with. And that's the that's the difference between playing and being on the couch. And everyone that plays will tell you it's a lot harder than, than it looks because they don't have the cheat sheet in front of them. They don't have the answers in front of them like, oh, you know what? Kayla is actually against me or Paris is actually against me, but she's telling me she's my friend. We see it at home. They don't. And that's the big difference. So Paris goes in and changes Kayla's mind before the nominations. And uh, you know what? It worked. So Ryan says, hey, you know, you're going to go home and watch it. And you're going to realize you made a big mistake. You know, he's right. But the problem is when she's at home watching it, the season's already over and it's too late. You need to convince her now. So that's the thing. You know, when he's saying when you go home, well, it's already too late. Someone's already won the hundred thousand dollars and you're already sitting at home. So the nominations, uh, good on Paris for switching her mind. Uh, that's a good ally to have. And uh, you know what? I think she did a good job doing it this week. Okay, now I want to get into editing a little bit. Okay, so Canada knows there's a vote, all right? Here's the thing. On the Monday night episode, I feel like production and the editing side really pushed for Will's character, okay? They showed him talking to his kid, the phone call. You know, it pulls on the heartstrings of the families at home. So I feel like they pushed for Will on Monday's episode. But Wednesday's episode, what? it was just like pure Ryan. They pushed for Ryan. Now, here's the thing, okay? People forget a lot. I've said it before in other videos, okay? That, you know, we, we watch our one hour of the episode. We go on with our day. We eat dinner, whatever we do. We go to work. We go out, watch movies, do whatever we want to do. And we forget about it. So then Wednesday comes. And now we see the episode where they're pushing Ryan's character a lot. You know, making us feel for Ryan. Always the underdog. Canada loves the underdog. They always have. They always will. The votes always go to the underdog. So here it is, we're Wednesday, Wednesday night's episode, they're really pushing Ryan's character, and then it's like, okay, now you can go vote. See, that's the thing. When they do things like that, I don't know if they do it on purpose or if they just don't realize, but, you know, people are very, you know, they live kind of in the moment, and whatever's fresh in their mind is what they go for. So, yeah, the thing on Monday with Will's, Will talking to his kid and everything, it's great and all, but Wednesday you see Ryan being this underdog, blah, 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 and it's fresh in their minds. So they're just, they just watch Ryan being kind of, whatever you want to call it, picked on or just lonely or whatever you want to call it. And then it's like, okay, go vote to save someone. Everyone's going to be like, of course I want to save Ryan. I feel for the guy. So it's it almost helped him get saved. And I don't know if they do that on purpose or not. But, you know, it's fresh in everyone's mind right before they go to vote. 
and you know what happens in the end. Now we get to Thursday's episode and they're really pushing Ryan's character. It's like a Rocky Balboa story where you know this guy comes from the bottom and he's like now rising to the top and you can see productions really behind him and it's almost like they you know they they're letting you know he's going to be saved because it's just literally the Ryan show. All of Thursday was the Ryan show uh, talking about how he loves Canada this and that and just everything he's saying it's just literally the Ryan show. And you can really see production starting to get behind them. I don't know if it's because they have nothing to work with and they need an underdog story. They need a, a plot they have to work with. And maybe they're, they're like, hey, we have to push Ryan because he's just come from the bottom. We want to bring him to the top. Who knows? But man, it was the Ryan show. The last two episodes was the Ryan show. And I mean, I have nothing against the guy. You know what? I'm. You know, it's funny because... I don't know if it's the editing that's working on me or if I just generally feel for the guy because he has nobody in there. And I know what it's like to be lonely in there. I know what it's like to be in there and to have nobody sucks. Like it's, there's nothing to do in there. Could you imagine sitting on a couch by yourself or when you walk in a room and people just leave because you're walking in the room every day, all day for three months straight. Come on. You know, I feel for the guy. I really do. Um, you know, I, I kind of hope he does well. Listen, he's not a great player. He is an awkward person, but you know what? That's not his. That's not his fault. So uh, I'd like to see him at least do well, um, and let's see how far you know Canada saving him. What it really does for his game. I just hope it doesn't affect the house. Here's the thing, okay? When you're in that house, you have no idea what's going on in the outside world. So by Canada saving uh, Ryan, okay, it could really play with the people's minds in the house, and they can think like, hey. Maybe Canada loves this guy, but in reality, they don't. It, they don't love Ryan. They just want to see something happen. They just like Canada, man. They just like to see, they just like to stir the pot and stir shit, which is crazy because these people are working so hard in that house 24 hours a day. And for Canada, for two minutes of entertainment, they're going to go do this and cut someone's game short that really deserves to be there. And it kind of sucks. So when you're in that house, you have no idea what the outside thinks. So by, by Canada saving Ryan, it can really make the house think like, oh man, Canada's behind this guy. We got to start working with him. We should kind of buddy up with this guy because he has Canada's support. When in reality, he doesn't. So votes and stuff like this can really skew the game. And it's just, it's too bad it's part of this game. Because I'll tell you something. There was two people playing this game all season. That's Johnny and that's Erica. The only two people that deserved... I don't even want to say deserve to be there. Nobody really deserves to be there, but they deserve the spot and where they are right now because they're working for it. And here's the thing, you know, you get a twist like this where, you know, Erica's safe. Listen, I can relate to her the most out of anybody. I was in this exact same situation on season three where I was safe. It was week eight. I was safe. Uh, I've never been, I've never seen the block. I was never nominated once. Week eight, I have two weeks to go. I'm about to go into week nine. And next thing you know, the same thing that happened to Erica, one minute I'm sitting on the couch, not even paying attention to what Aris is telling me on the monitor. I'm just thinking about the next HOH competition. Next thing you know, I'm sitting on the uh, on the nomination couch, and then I'm sitting beside Aris on the stage two minutes later. And that's exactly what happened to Erica. Uh, you know, I feel for her. She did like she deserves to be there more than anybody in that house. And it's just a shame that Canada throws these stupid twists in that are really not necessary. What does it do for the show? It does nothing. It literally takes the players that deserve to be there and it takes them out of the house for no reason. And then you get people like Derek still in the house. Who really cares about Derek? You know, like the guy's not doing anything. So here's the, here's the problem with these twists. Whenever you have a big twist like this that takes people out, it'll never take out a Derek a Marin or anybody that's just not doing anything in the house. People that are just kind of hanging out, doing nothing. It'll never, ever, ever target them. It'll always target the big, big players, either the biggest player in the house at the moment or one of the big players. In the it will always do that. Nobody will waste it on a Derek or a Marin. It's just never going to happen. So it just sucks that they throw these twists in. Again, I was talking to Rob when I was doing this podcast, Rob says, you know, and we talked about the marshmallow theory. You know, I have a five-year-old son. If I show him a big marshmallow and I say, you can have this marshmallow right now, or if you wait five minutes, I'll give you this whole bag of marshmallows. 10 times out of 10, he'll take that one marshmallow instead of getting a bag of them just because it's immediate pleasure, okay? And that's like the show, okay? That's the problem. So they get two minutes of entertainment, but they're going to lose four weeks of it because Erica's not in the house. That's how I see it. So the show really misses out on four weeks, potentially, if she could have lasted, on entertainment because they want two minutes of it for one episode. It just, to me, it, it just drives me crazy. It makes no sense. 
these poor people that like, working day in, day out, you know, working hard to get in the position they are. She's winning all these competitions and she goes out just like that. It's just, you know, it sucks. And I know how she feels because I was in the same spot on season three. And then trust me, it just sucks knowing that there's nothing you could do. You're literally helpless. Now, people can say you have all season to not be in that position. But no, that's not how it works, you know, because people will take the shot at certain players at those moments. And that that's nothing in their control. They're a good player. And like I've been saying in the other videos, the minute Erica doesn't have power, they will take the shot at her. They will take a shot at her where they can't miss. And this was the shot that there was no missing because there's no way she could fight for her life. She was on the block. It's like a band-aid. She's on the block and out the door just like that. So I really, really, really dislike this twist and any twist like it, they just need to let these players play. Now what is production going to do when they're stuck with nobody? All they have left is Johnny. Johnny is their ace in the hole. And you know what? I think he's in danger this week. So what happens when Johnny leaves? Who are they going to have playing the game? Absolutely nobody. And it's their own fault for putting these stupid twists in the game. So, you know, we want to see a season seven. But I'll tell you right now, I don't know anybody. I literally do not know anybody that is enjoying this season. And it's a shame because we have such a good show. And when production does stupid things like this, it really, really, really just takes the legs from underneath the season. So let's just hope we get a season seven out of it. Um, but who knows? Anyway, um, so that's, that's my recap this week. Uh, you know, it, it was more closer to home for me because I do know what Erica's going through. And it sucks. Uh, I did know what Will was going through, you know, talking to his kids, which is great. So I got to see a lot of, I got to feel, and I personally dealt with a lot of different elements through this uh, week because I've dealt with it personally myself. Um, Erica deserved to be their great, great, great player. I'm, pr I'm, I'm positive she'll be back if they do an All Stars. Um, they would definitely ask her back if we have enough seasons, uh, if we can get enough renews uh, of seasons to to get to an All Stars. Uh, I we definitely will see her again. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I feel for her and it's a shame. Anyway, that's the recap, guys. I hope you enjoy. Hit that sub button. Hit that like button. Leave comments. Tell me uh, if you know if I'm wrong on things. Like I said, I don't watch the feeds, so I'm just going by what I see on the edited show. Tell me how you feel about this twist. Tell me who you voted for. Write it all down. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a shame that Canada does these twists. I've said it a hundred times uh, and I'll keep saying it. They should not be in the game. Anyway, guys, have a great night. Take it easy. Peace.